I'm Diego Cordovez. Adam Schoenfeld. Welcome to The Scoop, brought to you by Full Tilt Poker. And today we have a poker legend, John Juanda. Actual superstar. A real superstar. And he's taken some periods where he's not played as much, but when he plays, he wins. And he's in, always deep in big tournaments. And he actually was in a contention for the World Series Player of the Year last year. Right. And finished runner-up at EPT London just recently. And he's just very interesting well-rounded guy, so we're lucky to uh, spend some time with an uh, old-school star. So you're, you've always been extremely modest, but you've actually had a big last year, maybe not without that big signature triumph, but at the World Series you were contending for Player of the Year the whole way through, and you were the runner-up at EPT London, and last year you had some deep runs over in Europe, and it seemed like for a while you've just not been playing very many tournaments, you've not been as motivated, maybe, and that you just kind of got serious about it again. Is that is that a correct impression, or, yeah, or no, is it just... You flipping? know, I, I, I played a lot of tournaments last year, and uh, I played mostly... I, I think I played every event at the World Series, and uh, you did. I had a lot of close, very close uh, 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 final tables, you know, where I had a really good chance to win the bracelet, but it didn't happen. And uh, in London, too, I finished second. Uh, what what yeah. motivated you to play more tournaments then? Uh, I don't know. I'm. I guess it's just my personality. Like I'm like uh, uh, I have this compulsive personality. Like if I stay away from poker for like two months, then I don't feel like playing poker at all. You know, if I do something, but if I get back to poker and start playing again, then I just feel like playing every day. Do you care about your public image and? The perception. In other words, ten years ago to five years ago, you're one of the main guys playing a lot of tournaments, very visible on the WT, WPT broadcast and so forth. Do you care about people who are recognizing you and remembering that you're one of the top players when you do play? Is that important? What are you saying? I'm not one of the top players anymore. You are. You are, you are. <laughs> when, when you play, when you play, but if you don't, if you don't, if you don't play for a few years. <laughs> People, well, people forget. No, actually, I don't really care. I just want to, you know, do, you know, things that I enjoy in life, you know. I mean, you know, you only live around once and, you know, you want to do things that make you happy, you know. Sometimes playing poker make me happy. You know, I mean, there are a lot of frustrations that come with it. But, you know, sometimes I do enjoy it a lot. Uh, I've been playing for 15 years. Yeah. I still enjoy it. But you know, some other times I enjoy, you know, going sightseeing or just hanging out with my friends. You know, I've been spending a lot of time in Tokyo and uh, uh, Singapore, Indonesia, and recently I've been spending a lot of time in Macau also. Right. Uh, so. And not play poker in those places too much. Uh, most of the places I mentioned, they there weren't any poker there, except for Macau. Right. How much of your time are you spending in cash games now as opposed to tournaments? Uh, this year I've only played the Aussie Million and uh, the rest of the time, I mean the rest of my poker sessions, I did them in Macau, you know, playing the cash game. In some of those, uh, and you don't have to give the amounts, but in some of those super buy-in games? Yeah, they, uh, <laughs> I guess super the game wealthy. could get pretty crazy sometimes, but you know, uh, obviously I'm not uh, I don't feel comfortable, you know, like discussing about no, I, the I'm details. Not you to say the amount. Yeah, because. Uh, but it, I'm sure you'll agree that it's notable. When I first met you 10 years ago, you were already very successful and you would play in what to me were very high games, but now those games are not even a scratch on the games that are considered the big games now. Right, right. Does it so, ever, do you ever think about how, does it ever shock you if you stop and think I know, about it? It's like so scary, right? I mean, we used to play like 4 and 800 limit or. or 25, 50, no limit, and that was huge. back in back in the days, those were you know the big games. I mean, yeah, the best players in the world were playing. Right. Exactly, you, you were like the super high roller to be playing in it, you know. Yeah. But nowadays, they like they don't even like spread a table for those games <laughs> anymore. You know? well, They're no. like, whoops, sorry, you know, 50, 100 or higher. Is it uh, a fair thing to say that in Macau, it's almost like the old days in poker, in that there are a lot of super rich businessmen who are not 
poker specialists, but you have them in the giant game? Yeah, Macau right now basically is like the U.S. in year 2000 or 2001. You know, there are some people who really like to play poker. You know, people are still learning the game. Uh, I've ran into a lot of really smart, you know, business people, and uh, they they are just very smart people. If they really want to learn, they can get really good at it. You know. Well, don't tell people because next time you sit down, the live is already going to be there. And, you know, <laughs> well, all what makes guys. you think he wasn't already there? <laughs> <laughs> right. This is the big, the big danger. He was already there. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't know that you really were playing in all these cash games. People learned about you because you had a lot of tournament success, and especially when the WPT first started, you were on the broadcasts. But I remember when I first met you, you were playing cash games every day, and playing big games, playing with, with Larry Flint and others. And um, I mean, that was really your, your base. I mean, the tournaments maybe made you well known, but you were you were a big, consistent, respected winner in, in all forms of cash games. And actually, no actually, like I said earlier, I'm like I go through phases. You know, like sometimes I really feel like playing tournaments, so I just play a bunch of tournaments. Other times I just feel like playing a lot of cash game. I just do that. And some other time I just don't feel like doing anything at all. Then I don't do anything at all. And you have the freedom to do that. Yeah, I'm, you know, I've been very fortunate and to you know be able to do that. What, one thing that's interested me is that one of the big flaws 10 years ago, 12 years ago, especially when I first started to play bigger tournaments, was that people played too tight. People didn't really call enough. And people were really trying to small ball, and if somebody big ball them, your own game? yeah, I was a victim. <laughs> me, being, me being the uh, right, the type one, the victim in this scenario. But if someone really applied that pre-flop pressure or tried to change the match into big ball, they really didn't have the the weapons to compete. And this was really your trademark. I mean, just from playing against you, you would really put people to to decision pre-flop. You were very aggressive much more so than the norm, and this led to a lot of success. Now, kind of the poker world's evolved where, if anything, people are even more aggressive, and some people play even crazier pre-flop, you know, very loose, putting in third, fourth, fifth raises. Seven bet, fold. With, with, <laughs> with weak hands. Right, uh, seven bet all in, and, right. you know, with like jack six off suit. Oh, so have you, have you, <laughs> so did you end up, right, so did you end up having to make your own Adjustments. Well, yeah, the absolutely. Games absolutely. How's this affected your Absolutely. Your own I think that's the beauty of poker. You know, it's it's a game of uh, how do I say this? I mean, a game of adjustment. You know, so you basically the good players they are always able to adapt. You know, so you just basically take what your opponents give you. You know, it, it's kind of like in sports too, like in. Football, for example, you know, if you're a really good football team, sometimes you run the ball, sometimes you throw the ball. It depends on, you know, the defense, you know. But do you and, find and it's the same thing with poker. Sometimes when the other players are playing so tight, like you know, like you mentioned, uh, 10 or 15 years ago, then you know you can take advantage of that. Exploit them. Yeah, exactly. But do you find that now you're kind of almost changing roles? Where now you're trapping these guys who've now taken it too far? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Actually, they are still some of those type players left so you know you still kind of play a certain way against them mm -hmm. but a lot of the new back players they are hyper aggressive <laughs> right. so you just have to they play differently you, you know uh, calm. So you, you lower your standard you know you no longer throw away queens or jacks before the flop <laughs> no. you know well, or even ace queen yeah oh, exactly or ace jacks would be unthinkable oh, yeah <laughs> 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 so you know you just play differently other other players, you know, those players who you know, they like to bluff a lot after the flop, you know, they would go two and three bare rows, like you said earlier, you, you know, try to trap them. Thanks for joining us on The Scoop, brought to you by Full Tilt Poker, and uh, you do not limit a man like John Juan no. to one episode. You don't come to a town like Las Vegas <laughs> and treat a man like John Juan like that! <laughs> so we're going to have him back next week, uh, talk about his life in general, but also his... Uh, poker goals for this year and uh, that will be on card player TV.